mm-hmm. back at it again, wrapping up another month in another series. Another one. Relationships. We eat, these up. we eat these series up. We do. We eat them up. We eat them we, up. We have come to the, the end of the relationship series, which I've really liked. And I think that you all have really enjoyed it as well. The last few episodes, y'all have been really um, embracing. They have. You've been embracing, which is, is they it feels have. good to us. It does feel good. I've put myself on Front Street a couple episodes, mm-hmm. but it does feel good to know that I'm not alone. Yeah. You know, we all have been in these relationships having similar situations. Yeah, experiences. Experiences. And, um, yeah, we got to talk about it. And I love it. We got to talk, about it. talk about it. And I love that we're wrapping it up with today's topic mm-hmm. because – the relationship that you have with yourself sets the foundation for all of your other relationships. Real talk, like, yeah. um, not Real saying talk, you, ha- oh my God. <laughs> not saying <laughs> you have to be a perfect person um, when you enter into a relationship, but it is beneficial to both parties to have some understanding and knowledge of who you are Mm -hmm. in a solid relationship with yourself. Yeah. Because like we said before, we get in these relationships or we hope to get into these relationships sometimes looking for a savior, Mm -hmm. someone to make us feel good about ourselves, someone to understand us, someone to provide something that we may be lacking. And it never goes well when that's the case. So if we take the time to really pour into ourselves and create and sustain a relationship with ourselves, we would all be better for it. And everything else will just be a bonus. That part. In you a real know, way. Everything else would just be a bonus. You wouldn't be looking for somebody to save you or somebody to complete you or somebody to validate your experience. You would already know, like, I feel so good. You know, it's just a it's a constant work. It's constant work. It is it's constant real work. inner work. It really is. And I think that we will see the quality of our relationships change mm-hmm. once we make this a priority. Um, it's serious. It is. It is. It's some serious business. So that's what we're talking about today. Yes. I'm excited. Um, this is an area of opportunity for me too, because sometimes I feel like, well, we'll get into it. Yeah. We'll get into it. But I'm, I'm glad that like you mentioned that we're talking about it because this relationship outside of being like a great mom or a great daughter, a great wife. Whatever are the relationships that you hold in your life, the roles that you possess, the relationship that you have with yourself is literally the single most important relationship you're ever going to be in. Think about how closely you are just existing with your, you are with yourself every damn day. 24 every damn day. Seven. And I think because we, <laughs> I think because we have this, um, thought of like, oh, who am I? I'm, I'm with myself, but not really looking at it like a relationship. We don't put that much effort into nurturing the bond that we have with ourselves it can and be really like cultivating it. Yeah. Cultivating is just kind of like, oh yeah, I'm me, I'm existing. And I think we think about ourselves in relationship to actually other people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so weird. It is, but the relationship with yourself encompasses the way you treat yourself. Mm-hmm how you talk to yourself, the way you show up for yourself, the thoughts you have about yourself. All of those things are pieces of the relationship you have with yourself. And like I was saying, sometimes it's like a stranger. Mm -hmm. You know, we could... The acquaintance, the high and by, the co-worker, the stranger in (laughs) my house. My girl, he just gives very much so. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Like, oh, you here? Just kind of moseying through, you know? Yeah. And and that's why I think the conversation today is so valuable because it's going to help us look at the relationship that we have ourselves, the bond that we have with ourselves on a deeper level, because most of us are likely just thinking about like self care. Like, Oh, how do I take care of myself? I'm really good to myself. I make sure I do this. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, but it's so much deeper. And the, the sooner we deepen our knowledge and our understanding of the relationship that we have with ourselves, like we've been saying, we're going to be better to ourselves for ourselves Mm -hmm. and for the people around us. Yeah. Um, and more, more than having a relationship with ourselves, really making sure it's a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. And a healthy relationship looks like knowing your strengths and also your areas your areas of opportunity as well. Mm-hmm. Like really accepting ourselves for who we are. Listen. The pastor had a word today. Oh, yeah. Now yes, that the yes. girls are back in church, we can bring it. Yeah, and we will be bringing what we've learned. We used to do that in the beginning, but y'all, you know, things shifted. Things shifted. We're straight. Exactly. But... 
he has said a word about shame and I feel like a lot of us carry shame because Mm. of parts of who we are we don't accept them or other people don't accept them so we walk around not fully accepting those parts but the moment that we just really start saying you know what this is who I am and that's hyper acceptance yeah you have to practice hyper acceptance which is you we all know that we've been through things and there's some things that we might not be proud of and there's things that we're going to go through in the future and like the but we have to really focus on our present self who are we right now in this moment and love that person fully and wholly yeah you know it's definitely a holistic approach when it it comes to having a healthy relationship with yourself the parts that we're super proud of that we want to scream from the mountaintops about who Mm -hmm. we are and the other parts where it's like "Ah, but it's me yeah it's me um when we're thinking about being in a healthy relationship with ourselves and being a good friend to ourselves i like to think and maybe even invite you to think of the way that you show up for the people in your life right like I know that you pride yourself on being dependable and loyal and um there's likely qualities that you're like I really know I bring this to the friendship and I'm good about it and I show up and people know that they could call me Mm -hmm. and that makes us feel good that we can be good friends to people right or that we can show up and be good family members to our you know family members but how often do you give yourself that same energy or think about yourself in that same regard? You know, we don't. Uh, I'll say I don't be thinking like that. I don't either. So much of or even in a relationship. Right. I pride myself on showing up as the best partner that I can be. And I'm thankful that I have a great partner who shows up as the best partner he can be. But I'm also in this relationship with myself. And it's like, how am I showing up as the best partner to myself? Right. Which is really important because the more relationships we begin to get in our lives, like significant others, children, we put ourselves on the back burner because we take so much pride in showing up and Mm -hmm. being available for those people. And when it comes time to do things for ourselves, we kind of look at it as look at it as being selfish or yeah. not as important, you know, because you have all these other relationships. But that should never be the case, honestly. I don't care what title you have. No. The relationship you have with yourself should always be front and center. First. In my opinion. And that's why we say self self first, not selfish. Can you show up for yourself? Self you? first is self full. Yeah. And then you can be whatever you need to be to everybody else. Yes. And you won't feel resentment for doing it. Because that'd be another thing. We'll be showing up, doing our best, putting our best self first, but then be a little bit resentful. And everybody else is taken care of and we're frazzled and Because the relationship with yourself is fucking suffering. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. The relationship that matters really the most that will allow you to show up as the best version of yourself is suffering. You're not pouring nothing into that. Yeah. But then you're thinking that you can pour out of yourself to show up for other people girl you actually are depleted and then we're kind of depending on those other people to show up for us and fill in the gap mm. and Six sometimes cycle. that doesn't happen Six sometimes cycle. that does not happen so, so if you had to re- rate the relationship that you have with yourself on a scale from one to ten mm-hmm. what would you say the score would be and why hmm is it a healthy relationship i would say toxic? <laughs> I would say probably like a 7.5 maybe. Yeah. Um, because I think an area of opportunity for me with the relationship with myself is to not be so hard on myself and not so critical and give myself more grace and understanding because yeah. I don't be doing that. Mm-hmm. I am my own worst critic. I'm, I'm The conversations I have with myself sometimes, most times are like, girl, what the fuck? Like you, <laughs> you would think I'm just, you know, down bad. Yeah. The way that I'd be thinking, like, girl, what the fuck? You need to do this. You need to do that. Why aren't you doing this? Why isn't this happening? Like, I really think that's the biggest area of opportunity for my relationship with myself. Mm. Because I don't talk about my friends like that. I don't think about my friends like that. Like, if they were to say, like, they were having a hard time or they feel stuck or Whatever, I'm champion, championing them and saying and reassuring them that that's not the motherfucking case. Like, no, girl, right. you're doing great. But when it comes to me, I'm like, yeah, no, girl, you're actually not. I know. So I, know I would what say. What makes us think we can be that harsh on ourselves? I don't know, but I am. I'm like, you need to do better. Yeah. Even if I'm doing my best sometimes. Yeah. So I would say 7.5 because yeah. of that. And. I think there's like some area of opportunity for for me to also keep more of my promises to myself. 
like smaller things because they're the big things I do. I do pride myself in like doing what I say I'm going to do. But there's things that slip through the cracks where I'm like, girl, you said you were going to do that and you did not. Yeah. So what about you? Um, I would say between that seven, seven point five, kind of like a C, you know, high C. Getting by. Yeah, getting yeah. by. Like I'm not really excelling. It's passing. Exactly. Like I'm doing cool, but I definitely understand where there's some areas for me to be better. I think that I could be more vulnerable with myself. Mm. Um, I can allow myself to go a little bit deeper with myself and like hold space where I'm not judgmental or like feeling any shame for anything that I've done or haven't done, you know, just being overly critical in a way that's not like you're not where you're supposed to be, but like for who you are, you know? Cause I feel like sometimes we like can be your- hard on ourselves because like you should be here. You have these desires that you want to be executing and you're not there because you're being lazy or whatever it is, or you're not putting enough energy into it versus like, embracing who uh, everything that i am in this current moment like right. not thinking about getting to a destination but just like this is who i am yeah and loving myself for like all of my, my flaws and all what did beyonce say for every fupa but although i don't <laughs> <laughs> you had to be there sorry yeah. we're not at the birthday show right <laughs> but yeah you missed it um, yeah but just yeah like fully accepting myself you know yeah. accepting myself and allowing myself to see myself to be seen like, I have a real issue with being vulnerable, not yeah. just with other people, but with like yourself. with myself. Yeah. Like, what? And are that's you? why you can't be with, with other people. Probably so. Like, it's a, it's a, in select moments where I'm like, okay, I feel okay. I, I, I feel safe where I can be vulnerable. It's just a matter of do I want to be? Yeah. Do I always want to be? And I think that, I think that there's, um, Obviously, you can be particular or choosy with who you want to be vulnerable with because safety is is attached to vulnerability. Do I feel safe to disclose? But then I also think there's some power in just sharing and just being vulnerable. You know what I mean? And not feeling like, okay, only these people can know my story. Only these people can understand where I'm coming from. Like, there's also a power in just being just sharing. just living out loud. Yeah, I think sometimes we use the safety as a as an excuse to yeah. not disclose. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that all of the business, all the tea has to be disclosed. No, but it'll be like zip tight. Soldier. Girl. There's no part of me. You know, it's a scale. Yeah. There's vulnerability on a scale. I and feel I like also you think depending on what you want to talk about. Yeah. Everything can't be zip tight now, bitch. Right. Go get in the safe. Because then it's like nobody really knows you. Nobody really knows you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm tired of being unknown. You're tired of being mysterious? Mysterious? Mystery girl? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm tired of being elusive. A girl of mystery. A little elusive. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily that I'm tired of it. I just think that there's work to be done and I'm stopping myself. And it's like, you actually could be further along. You actually have an assignment mm. and you are stifling the process because of your inability to get out of your own way. Yeah. And we've talked about this so much, like off air. Like, Listen, baby. That's why the the word this year was boldness. Was that this year? Was that like girl? The way year, we wrote it. What year did that we word roll come these in? words? Up? It was this. Year. I think it was this year. That was my word. It was this year. And um, I just trying to walk it like I talk it. I'm tired. Yeah. But mainly with myself, you know, just holding an intimate space for me to explore what I'm feeling, explore what I want, explore my desires, go a little deeper. Yeah. 